everyone and welcome to a monday morning version of the gill cast uh this one this one was my fault it was uh, it was my fault that we had to record on monday morning but honestly uh you know the the big reason for doing the gill cast is uh is the is the immediate sunday night tilt there just there was really no tilt to be had unfortunately it was just one of those weeks where uh I, honest to god guys i kind of prefer when you have a sweat i i do it's like there was literally no sweat like yesterday really was not even that fun because if you didn't just play Gabe Davis in tournaments, you were, you were not going to win. You were not going to get first place. I did not have Gabe Davis on any tournament teams. And I mean, we like, I think we probably knew our cash team was going to win by the end of the first quarter, probably. I mean, yeah, because Alan, Alan had 20 at the end of the first quarter and he was, you know, like he was 25% in the double ups, which meant that you just had the Brady teams dominated. And uh, I, I guess really we knew we were going to win when Brees Hall ripped off the 80 yard reception. And that was just it. Oh yeah. When, when Brees went nuts, I literally was, I looked at my wife and I said, Hey, I uh, want, want to go for a walk later with the dog. And she's like, Oh, it's one of those weeks. L- like when I'm losing, normally that's what I right, offer exactly. to do for the afternoon. It's like, I'm like, no smashing. Yeah. Like, it, and it, you just knew, like it was, it was one of those days unfortunately well, not I, gpp a little bit of a sweat because I, I didn't play josh allen so it was a uh, it was a little it was a little more sweaty for me when josh allen just kept throwing touchdown after touchdown after touchdown against my vaunted pittsburgh steelers defense uh but but yeah it was, it was I mean, a little tougher so the three man standings nate and i played the same team uh we played the same team as almost everyone else did uh let's see in the massive 25 dollar double up our team came in 10th place out of like 6000 entries and all the way from place 10 to place 258 was all our team so that means our our team was about what nate about 1 to 3% of the field in any given double up something like that yeah. uh our team placed 91st place in the millionaire maker our team played by Mo Lovin won the fifty dollars single entry red zone. Um, so that team was Josh Spy, Allen. Some other yeah. stuff too. Yeah. Our, our team was Josh Allen, Leonard Fournette, Brees Hall, Chris Godwin, Tyler Lockett, Chris Olave, Tyler Higby, Jeff Wilson Jr., and the Cowboys defense. Um, scored a lot of points. I mean, honestly, it was to the point of like, I don't care about this Cowboys defensive. Like the Cowboys defensive touchdown actually was more annoying because obviously I didn't play any of them in tournaments. And uh, so at that point, it was just like, well, that just is making it harder for me to regain equity on some of these shitty tournament teams that I I was so dead in tournaments that it didn't matter. At that point, it was just watching the the run out almost was more tilting in cash games just because. When you hit the nuts like that and literally everything that could go right went right and you don't get to profit more than, I mean, I probably profited 5% more than I profited last week and it was 100% the best run out you could have asked for on almost the, every single The team player. that won the million dollars in the Millionaire Maker Contest was just a simple 2v2 off of our lineup, which it was just Gabriel Davis instead of Chris Olave and Kay Dotton instead of Tyler Higby and that that won the million dollars. Uh Holy both shit. Kate Otten, Kate Otten was totally in play for cash. I had a Kate Otten team at one point. I actually had the team that Sammy played uh, at one point as well. The team that Sammy played was Tom Brady, Leonard Fournette, Brees Hall, Cooper Cup, Chris Godwin, Tyler Lockett, OJ Howard, Jeff Wilson Jr. in the Cowboys defense. So Sammy played a 3v3 with Brady Cup and Howard instead of Josh Allen. Alave and Tyler Higby. And and to be honest, Higby, well, I mean, what did he get? Like seven receptions in the end. I yeah, he had, he had 10 targets. I just felt like it was very important for me to go back to getting zero from my tight end. You know, yeah. it was just it, last week <laughs> I think brand. I got some points and I was like, yo, I got I gotta I gotta switch this up. Yeah, I mean the hit I actually had no problem with like I, I think that all of these lineups that that did not play Tyler Higby even from like a theoretical perspective, even from a projection perspective, I think they were all fine. I think that the mistake at this point is just not playing one of Josh Allen or Jalen Hurts in cash. I mean, I just, I just think, 
I like it, it's like and and not only not only I mean like Brady is is obviously the the efficiency is returned the you know the Buccaneers were marching up and down the field they they had some red zone troubles I think I think they had a turnover in the red zone if I'm I think maybe someone fumbled in the red zone if I'm remembering correctly but the big difference between Brady and and this is even true for Mahomes as well and we're going to see this next week too because the Bills and the Chiefs play each other next week and that's going to be uh, you know, obviously a lot of attention is going to be on that game for daily fantasy. The chiefs don't have uh, that killer drive in the second half. They're just kind of hanging. And the, the Eagles too. I mean, the Eagles could have put away the Cardinals yesterday, but they were, well, their offensive line got injured. Uh, I don't remember which one, one of their tackles. But the Eagles, got hurt. I mean, Hertz's fantasy production in the second half is, is just brutal this year. I mean, all yeah. of his product, it's like 80% of his production has come in the first half. They just, they take the foot off the gas where with the bills, they don't, you know, I mean, Allen, Allen is, is, is a one. This is like a unique season right now to be playing someone like, I Allen. mean, he, so I, he I threw, I don't think that Brady was bad. I, I personally, I, don't... I, I just felt so good about the wide receivers and the overall floor that yeah. I felt like my team had, there was no places that I felt like I was giving up equity and I, yeah, I, I didn't really think cash was this hard. I mean, this team I had built on Saturday and I was like, I'm not giving up anything at wide receiver. I know the Shakir news and the Callaway news made a lot of people pivot. See, I did. I did really want to play Khalil Shakir and some people played, oh. some people played Marquez Callaway. And I had this argument with a couple people in, uh in, you know, discussion. And I just, I thought Shakir was very clear of Marquez Callaway uh i mean and the argument for callaway who some people did play was okay you know he's going to play 100 percent of snaps he's going to be out there you know pretty much the uh the entire game and i mean i i believe that that was true uh marquez callaway played 56 of 77 offensive snaps he ran a drop back on 21 of 27 routes and shakir was uh out there less he played on 39 to 56 snaps but he actually ended up running more routes he ran a route on 28 of of uh 39 dropbacks like he was clearly ahead of isaiah hodgins clearly ahead of tanner gentry and i thought shakir was good so sammy i was trying to find something similar to your team but i was giving up um one of lockett or alave as well i was going i was keeping josh allen and yeah. doing shakir a punt tight end and um, I don't I don't remember exactly what, but it was to get Cup. It was to get Shakir and Cup over Lockett and Alave. Because I course. if you played one of those, if you played one of those dusty like those value type wide receivers, you needed to get up to Cup. That was the only team that made yes. sense. To me. And yeah, I you, and it, like I said, I don't think it was that bad. But I do. My personal opinion is that Callaway was not as good of a play as Shakir. And I know that all the sites had Callaway projected for more points. That was like a. It was like a big time. I know better spot. I do. You, do you remember when Callaway was going in like the sixth round of best ball last year? Yes. When he, yes, when he I got, do. when he got just like pumped up and, and he was a thing. Yes. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I was Callaway is a wind sprinter, dude. Callaway Callaway's is, is a, he's just a wind sprinter. I mean, he's Chris Hogan basically. Yeah. Uh, I'll say this. I agree with you guys about, uh, the, the quarterback position, you know, it's just like, I played Brady and, Olave had done, you know, and I did this so I could get up and, and play Cooper Cup because he's just like a complete smash all the time. But Olave has been doing so good in terms of like air yards and market share and all this that like, I think it was probably better the way you guys did it. I didn't want to be results oriented. Um you know, you guys scored 221. I scored two. Well, Olave, like, it, so so your lineup was closer to ours than it looks because Alave suffered a concussion on a play where he got awarded a touchdown. I where saw honestly, that. <laughs> I, I could see the refs going either way. So if you were not watching the games yesterday, Alave scores a touchdown, but it was it was kind of the Calvin Johnson rule where he he has it in his arms. He does take two steps, but then when he goes to the ground, uh, because he got knocked out cold as he went to the ground, the ball ends up bobbling out. And like I've seen that rule go either way like the refs yeah. are the refs are just flipping coins at that point so Alave was pretty close to having I mean what was that a 20 yard touchdown I mean that's a nine point play I mean he was pretty close to being a single digit guy for for sure but like but he also got hurt you know and, and didn't yeah. play the rest of the game I'll, I'll just say like you know I felt very very good about getting to Cooper Cup and my lineup like I just felt like 
I was okay. Once, once we started talking about it Sunday morning, how it was okay to like not play Higby because Higby was the best tight end play. But, but, but like, we, we have talked about this all year on the show. Like these 4k tight ends, they're the worst plays. Like I told I that to, I told that to Wiggins on Sunday morning. I was like, Higby is like a great play. Clearly the best points for all our play going to get a bunch of targets. But if, if it, if Higby is preventing me from getting to the lineup, I want, I'm j- I just, I don't care. You know, right. I don't care. Yeah. So I, I finally went down to Howard. Of course, Howard just cucked it up and scored zero, zero J Howard and cup, you know, caught a whatever, like 75 yard touchdown <laughs> right away. And it was like, okay, like I'm going to win. Like, this is great. Did you, I, yeah, did, did you consider Otten at all at tight end? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I, I, I think that was a leak. Otten was the guy I decided in the end was better. I had too many. I I didn't want too many bucks. I already had Fournette, yeah, Brady, and Godwin. I yeah. I just that's the reason I didn't go with Otten there. Um, yeah. I just didn't want to go fourth buck because uh, the chances, like the structural integrity of the lineup, like the the bucks are. I mean, you can say, oh, they're back and Brady's efficient and it's not. They suck, dude. They suck. Brady threw one touchdown. Like that team's ass. I'm out. Brady threw fifty something times in one time. I mean, it, it, I know crazy for the Brady that we and like, and oh, it's not like it's not like OJ Howard didn't play the role you expected. I mean, he played forty six of fifty eight snaps. He ran a drop back on fifteen of twenty five snaps. The issue was the the Texans remained competitive in that game, so they just got to hammer Damian Pierce. Damian Pierce had twenty six <laughs> rushes, twenty six <laughs> rushes in that game. It's a big problem for us in Survivor. Big, too, big problem for us. Big problem for us in Survivor. But I mean, had the Jaguars been able to score points, it 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 could have been a little bit different. I mean, and the Jaguars yeah. even gained a ton of yards. I I believe the Jaguars had like 450 yards of total offense. Um, they just which, they just couldn't score in the red zone, which is insane because uh, Christian Kirk did nothing. Yeah, they had they had nothing. 422 yards on on offense and and just couldn't find, just couldn't put points on the board yeah i don't understand what happened in this game i, I didn't watch any of it so shout out to me good job it, it just it really wasn't on red zone i mean it, etn had etn had 10 for 71 as a rusher three for 43 as a rec- marvin jones had a huge game is what ended up happening he had seven for 104 and kirk had God, I hate three marvin targets jones. one reception 11 yards yeah let's don't, talk don't a little bit let's- about Running back, because I do think where we went with running back, I felt way more confident in, we'll start with Wilson. I felt, I I mean, Fournette was obviously, I think he was everybody's number stone, one. Stone, stone lock, yeah. yeah. So I think the Brees Wilson Hall spot and Brees was the debate. Were the two, Wilson and Brees were the two. I felt really comfortable in Wilson. I know a lot of people didn't, which was surprising to me to see Wilson's level of ownership. I I felt like Wilson was almost as close as Fournette for me at his price tag. And I felt, a little shaky about Brees, about Brees. But... I mean, we, uh, justifiably so. I mean, Michael Carter played a ton in this game. Oh yeah, I mean, we Michael remember. Do, still do you guys guy, remember early down guy? He's. I mean, Brees. Brees is only the guy for passing downs and then uh, two minute drills. Like it's Michael Carter is still first down, and second down, the guy that they're trusting with or goal line. Situations. Carter Carter like, played twenty five of fifty nine snaps. Brees played forty one of fifty nine, but. By far the most tilting was that they got to the one yard line Touchdown. twice as a result of Brees, right? Brees got Brees had a 79 yard reception, gets oh down to the God. one, they give Carter the touchdown. He does it again in the fourth quarter. I think it was like an 18 yard run, gets them to the one yard line, and they bring in Carter. They did it to him twice. I mean, dude, and, that's unfair. And he missed the double bonus by three rushing yards. Like this yeah, could have yeah. been an all time Brees Hall day. We ran bad. Like, I we mean, Brees, bad. Brees Hall. You don't you don't see it that often. I I like so what double bonus plus twelve. I mean he could have got to forty five. Do you yeah. do, do you, do you guys remember close. when we were tilting in the first quarter because Carter got like the first three or four touches and I was like good job guys we played the Jets backup back running up back running back. Dash. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah I, I do think Carter like the, the Brees Hall thing could have gone bad. I do think the Jeffrey Wilson play is though like he's the guy. Oh I mean, it, Wilson was I, such I a good play. I don't. Weren't. Yeah, I mean, I, I, before before yesterday, he had given up one singular rush to another to another running back. Um, now the workload yesterday, I actually do think, in a way, Jeff Wilson Jr. ran good to get the stats that he had. He got the hundred yard bonus. Um, so yesterday he, he Tevin saw, showed up. We saw a reduced role. He played thir- He played fifty percent of the snaps. He played thirty eight of sixty six snaps. He ran fifteen routes, which was the same amount as use check. They they use use check in the the third down back role a little bit more, 
and he had 17 carries to Tevin Coleman's eight. I mean, which was the reason why I thought Jeff Wilson Jr. was probably not that great of a tournament play, which is just like in the in the red zone, they're they're doing other stuff, right? I mean, you know, Debo and Usechek and Kittle, like uh, 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 George Kittle returning to being like a guy who's um, you know a real a real human being seems seems pretty good. But I thought I it was interesting though. I mean, no one really played a seventy three hundred dollar Dalvin Cook as a home favorite against the Chicago Bears. You can't and Dalvin in, is in not the a dome. Good play, Davis in Dalvin the dome. Not, Dalvin would have been a bad play. Dalvin legit. Yeah, I do. Dalvin is not the same Dalvin. He got there from an efficiency standpoint, but Dalvin is not this three down. It's every because it's it's because of the shoulder. They're they're playing Madison more on third downs now. Nate is correct. So like Dalvin at his price, I actually think was a bad play. Like Dalvin would have to be below Kamara for me to consider him. I think. Like, well, that's the other thing. I mean, we we also did not play Alvin Kamara, who in a very similar way to Brees Hall uh, could have really smashed. Taysom Taysom saved. This could have gone real bad for us. The fading Kamara and going Breeze. Yeah. If Taysom doesn't be ta- if Taysom isn't Taysom and Kamara gets two touchdowns, I mean, with, without forty five burger on her five point without ball. without a touchdown, he had twenty three for one hundred three as a rusher and six for ninety one as a receiver. I mean, we're we're talking about we just talked about Breeze maybe having a forty five point day. Kamara also Kamara. almost had three touchdowns and the double bonus. Like it was, we were very close to getting punished for not playing him. Yeah, but you know, in the end, Taysom Hill, Taysom Hill. I mean, I mean, he's gonna win me. Two, he's gonna win me two million dollars. <laughs> I I had I had Kamara in my original lineup. Um, you know, he was, this is he was a... this is an interesting little wrinkle. I, Taysom is still tight end eligible on Fanduel, um, and I think oh. people are I think people are gonna start playing him now after this. Even at, even at like sixty one hundred, I wonder if DraftKings makes the switch though at some the point. The only probably way too- you can play Taysom is is tournament. There's just no there's no game script. There's no projecting. There's no. Oh, I didn't I didn't mean I didn't mean for cash, but I meant I. It's like I was talking about this with um Rich Rebar yesterday of just like where would you rank Taysom as a tight end moving forward? And like honestly, I don't think there's a world where on websites where he's tight end eligible, he's not top ten because. Oh, what are you going to do? Five. I mean, you're gonna the play. tight end position is total it's so dust. Bad. The upside yeah. that he can, what he can do in a single week in, in getting 25 points, very few tight ends can. Like Dal- Dalton Schultz, Dalton Schultz, who was the tight end six in fantasy football this year, has put up back to back air balls while not being injured, right? But back to back games with zero receptions. But Taysom could also be game scripted out and get three snaps in the entire game, and you can you couldn't be pissed. But I mean, like, it's like, but that's true. Of- about- that's true of every tight end. I mean, TJ Hawkinson came off the seventh best tight end performance of all time, all time last week, and had one reception for six yards against the New England Patriots, right? Yeah, the Lions game was a disaster. Well, here's, I mean, here's the thing, and, and we don't have to belabor the point about Taysom, but he has no floor, right? The floor is like insanely low because he's not really catching passes. You know what I mean? He's like rushing the ball. And so there will be games where he has one rush for two yards and that's it. And then occasionally he'll have, a but you're also, like but this. I mean, you're getting that from TJ Hawkins and Dalton Schultz and, and all these other guys. So it's like, yeah, Fox I mean, I still had like 50 air yards this week. I mean, it was just, yeah, it, was, had like it, zero it, was, it was an all time. It was an all time letdown spot for the lines. I mean, I bet, I bet, um, on, I bet on the Patriots in that game with, uh, with Mr. Zappy, uh, Okay, let's see. I, I we... played. I played the Patriots defense in a GPP, uh, yeah, and I did. And did. I did too. And did not cash it. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, same. Uh, okay. I mean, is there anything else interesting about our team? I mean, I guess it is. What did everybody else play? Well, I mean, you know, there were two v twos off this team. I think a lot of people did the Kamara, did the yeah. Kamara thing. Yeah, I think a lot of some people I saw even did two punt t- two punt wide receivers in Callaway and Shakir. Oh, yeah. stop! Um, stop! No. I'm trying to think of any other common builds. I don't know. I again, this one didn't feel like you had to galbrain to get there. Well, here, yeah, let's, I mean, l- let me let me sort by ownership in the in the the fifty dollar double up. So in in the fifty dollar double up, guys that we well see, Brady was actually the most owned quarterback. He was forty four percent owned. So that means more people did something weird right so either either um you know didn't play Lockett or or didn't play Brees Hall and got up to Kamara got up to Dalvin Cook 
Um, yeah, Kamara was 33%. A lot of people played Ramondre in cash, which they kind of, to be honest, sucked out on because Damian Harris got injured. Uh, yeah. Ramondre, Ramondre in the end got up to 26 rushing attempts for 160 yards. Also, let me just tell you this. If you were one of the people that played a 23% owned James Robinson in the massive $50 double up, oh my send God. me, send me, a send, fucking, me. send me a fucking game next week. Dan, Find because... Nate N. I don't care what you have to do on DraftKings. Find Nate N. James, James, James Robinson. Robinson? Worst play on the I'm I this is the first time I've looked at these ownerships. That's the worst play I've ever seen in cash. That must have been one single site that put out like an optimal with him. There's that, no you're, way, you're like, right. That totally had to be some yeah, website yeah, yeah. that that had him in their optimal. It's, it's one week season for sure. <laughs> I mean, this is this is interesting. Like Mike Evans, 14%, never considered him. Damian Harris, 12%, never considered him. I considered no. Damian Harris. I actually thought Damian Harris in, in tournaments was really good. Never in Oh, yeah, yeah. Damian, I'm, but I'm, the Lions are totally different are, things. Yeah, the Lions are a brutal, brutal defense where, like, I thought both Damian Harris and Ramondre were in smash spots. It's just not in cash. Yeah, well, I, played... I, I guess Ramondre, Ramondre is not that much different. Than, Ramondre than is more ball. defendable in cash than Damian Harris is. Because he catches more yes. passes. But I'm saying Ramondre is similar to a Brees Hall. Like, yes, in this spot. So yeah, like he, you, you're I you're discounting you're point. discounting the touchdown equity to get more reception equity, which is what you want on DraftKings for the most part. Yeah, I mean, I and I guess the other interesting thing is just like, is this week of all the chalks smashing so so hard? Is that going to build? Is that going to feed into how people are building in our contests next week? Right. I mean, we've had. We've actually now had three weeks. So week one, uh, 3v3 off the optimal team wins the Millie Maker. Last week, just stacking, you know, all these 20% owned lines and Seahawks players won the Millie Maker. And this week, a 2v2. Honestly, I bet if you went and looked at that guy's team who won the Millie Maker last week, I bet you could find Mike Evans or, or someone instead of Gabe Davis duplicated in cash because the rest of the guys he played was like a cash team, like yeah. all guys who were yeah. double digit owned in cash games, other than Gabe Davis. Now Pretty he's got crazy. A million dollars. Good for him. No, yeah. but it's it, it is. I mean, you know, because this stuff is all changing and evolving. And I mean, something that's happened with ownership recently is guys who are expected to be mega chalk come in a little bit less owned than you think, and guys who look like leverage plays, like Rashad Penny last week, stuff like that, come in a little bit more owned. Because Every, everybody's quote unquote sharper, right? And that's been a development. Everyone's just break. galbraining a little bit more. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, so like in the red zone, Shakir ended up being like 15% owned, which I thought um, uh, yeah, was you low. You never see that back in the day. Though. No, no. Mm -mm. Um, okay. Let's see here. Let me pull up. Let me pull up my red zone team. It, uh, it spoiler alert. It was not very good. Uh, really? Red zone. Okay. In the red zone, I played Jalen Hurts at 15%. Dalvin Cook, who I thought was the best tournament play, at 13%. I really liked Rashad Penny in that game. Uh, he broke his leg, so <laughs> tough. <laughs> rest in peace, buddy. Uh, then I played A.J. Brown with Jalen Hurts. He had three receptions on the first drive, then did not get one for the rest of the game. Played Hollywood Brown as my bring back. I played Khalil Shakir on every team that I made in tournaments. Dallas Goddard as the double stack, Rondell Moore at 5% in the flex, and the Seahawks defense, who got a singular point as leverage off of the Cowboys defense. Turns out leverage doesn't matter when you lose a 1v1 uh, by 22 points. So I all my teams, all my teams were exactly like that. It was Kyler doubles or or Hertz doubles. I, I thought that game looked really good. Looking at the ownership percentages, I think my my read was right. Hollywood, Devonta Smith, uh Rondell Moore. Were the only double digit owned guys from that game were the quarter uh, was Hertz, Kyler was two percent, Goddard was double digits, AJ Brown was double digits, but it just didn't end up happening. I mean, the thesis was the Browns or the the Eagles go up two touchdowns and then Kyler throws fifty five times, which looked like it was going to happen, and then the Eagles just stopped scoring, which was very yeah. frustrating. And then and then Zayvon Collins didn't make more than five tackles. Yeah, it's very very frustrating. IDP yeah. prop day for me. Yeah, yeah, you don't. You uh, don't well, it, you know, it was really it was doubly tough for Penny because he breaks his leg, and then I think Walker rips off like a seventy yard touchdown 70 right yard after, touchdown. and it's like, yeah. oh damn, dude, you're, Ad you're adios. Yeah. Penny just 
man, for his talent and and the injuries he's it, had. It stinks, I mean, every dude. time he's been, every single time he's been on the field, he's performed at a level that like, if he was healthy, we'd be talking about him like. Well, I, I think we'll probably never like so this dude we'll coming see, back no. from a broken leg. Like we'll probably never see I him mean, again, it, right? It's a fibula. He'll he'll be back, but it, I mean, it's not like it's a. It's almost worse when it's a soft. Uh, but he's on a he's on a he's on a one year contract. The Seahawks probably won't re-sign him now with Kenneth. I mean, depending on how Kenneth Walker plays, like he'll probably go be the third string running back for the Bears next year or something. Yeah, it's just sad. His career could have been something. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, uh, Sammy. But, yeah, or, no, yeah Nate. Which one of you guys wants to go next? Uh, I go mean, ahead, I, Nate. I, I, do I even want to? I I'll have to pull it up. I literally. All right. This this guy's this guy was. Teddy Bridgewater. Okay. Oh, no, I, I, oh my dude. god! <laughs> I texted you guys. I wasn't kidding. I did. T- I did Bridgewater double stacks. So I thought, uh, I thought you were joking. No. Uh, so I had Bridgewater, Hill, and Waddle. Uh, both Hill and Waddle came in under ten percent, which I was like excited about. Yeah, that's uh, that's nice. So yeah, I, and then I brought it back with Brees Hall, uh, Damian Harris, Mike Evans uh goddard zay jones and titans d i mean i don't even have a I, I felt good when i saw ownership flip over because i do think bridgewater and tyreek and waddle at single digit is is just a smash spot because i i i i guess i didn't realize how hurt waddle and uh Tyreek were but the quarterback downgrade for them it didn't really factor into their overall projection to me as much as for some because so much of what they do is yards after the catch anyway and just getting the ball into their hands they're gonna um they're gonna be able to make plays and so I thought they had as much upside as they've ever had and at that price it was it was an easy play so uh and then Bridgewater was cheap enough that I felt like even though I knew he's not gonna provide rushing upside and everything else like that i mean waddle and, and hill can get him the touchdown i just am not i'm not playing these dusty guys in tournaments um you know the the mar the mar the, the, Mar- the mariotas the the teddies the i mean even I like still... the, even even like the Kirk cousins is and stuff dude like if you if you cannot envision your quarterback getting 40 like i just am i'm not playing I think in tournaments at a certain price point, it's okay. I think the dead zone is where you get these like Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousins, like these guys that are like six. Sure. Yeah, they got to be like what was Teddy like fifty four hundred? Fifty four. Yeah, yeah. I, I do think that like when Mariota is priced where he was two weeks ago or whatever when he was popular tournament player, like that stuff actually does make sense because a thirty point from a five k guy is very different than a twenty five or a twenty point Kirk Cousins game at sixty six hundred. Yes. Know? I think so. that's, I think that's, I think that's true. I mean, in general, I am like, I would say 90% of the teams I build this year are going to be Mahomes, Allen, Hertz, Herbert, Kyler, probably like just, although the Kyler thing is like, they have been, he has been so cucked by Cliff. It's just like, it's not even fun to watch him play anymore. Well, yeah. It, I mean, but, is all, it, all, how it, much of it is Cliff and how much of it is Kyler not being good? Like I, I was watching I think him. Kyler is. I still, good, I, think I, think really really I yes. think Kyler's mentally, I think Kyler's mentally unable to play the game at, at the level he needs to to let his physical talent show. Through. Well, he is he's Kyler is Kyler is he is a step he is Kyler is very good, but he is a step below the truly great quarterbacks, and like that really holds him back. In I mean, I and the thing is, physically, is it, I think physically he's right there. I just think he makes bad decisions, doesn't know how to read, and doesn't have overall football IQ. I mean, some of those some of the stuff he does, you're just like, what are you doing? But physically his gifts are as, as, as much there as anybody. And and I think for, for our purposes, like just betting on those insane physical gifts, but I, I do, it's like, and I mean, look, we're all going to have to be making this decision next week. Like, what is the, what do we think the, what do we think the total for the look ahead line in, uh, in Bill's chiefs is like, what if it's 52? Oh, it's like 50, dude, it's going to be like 54 or 55. It's going to be see, out of control. Let, let me see. It's going to be it's like up. one of the highest we've ever seen. It's uh, 53, I don't know. 53 I think half. Bill's defense is going to keep it like both. Yeah, I can see that being not as high as we think. It will the be Bills, because... the Bills are a two point favorite. I mean, just like everyone from that game is going to be insanely chalked. Uh, the Bills are going to get Isaiah McKenzie and um, Dawson Knox back in that game. Oh, and we're going to get we're definitely going to get some information about that because the Chiefs play on Monday night and someone could get hurt. 
we could you, there could be a breakout right MBS could score a long touchdown Juju could finally have a good game you know we'll see but the that that Juju's is going to have a good game that's not gonna happen. yeah that's uh, gonna be when does, when does Hopkins come back week seven he's week dust. seven he's no I, I mean think, I actually think Hopkins Hopkins Rondell Moore and Marquise Brown on this team, I actually do think that Kyler end of season is going to look very different. And Kyler's going to be right there with the Jalen Hurts. Like he's going to be in the top five QB at the end of season every week. Yes. I dude, every time I see Kyler, he's just throwing like five yard flat routes. And right. Never, and that and he, that's that's the issue is that because the whole that's where goes. his guys are. I mean, I, dude, runs dude, I, I get it. I get it, but he's also runs those routes. He's also run more than five times in a game once all season. It's yeah, not like can't, we like, can't we can't have that. We we absolutely cannot have that. Yeah, that ain't it. Yeah. Well, um, you you guys are going to look like fish by week 15. <laughs> what what in, in what by by saying we're big on Kyler? Like I think being too low on Kyler, like now I'm is saying the opposite. I'm with Kyler. you. I'm saying I'm saying I played Kyler this last week at two. Yeah, I like saying, Kyler. And I'm saying I think Kyler kind of sucks. So, <laughs> so here we you're, are. you're a fish. Whatever. <laughs> Keep playing your juju nonsense. <laughs> you guys, you guys had Blender on the show last last week. He was giving actual uh, actionable information, and now I'm back giving IDP takes and uh, talking about well, Kyler's talent level. Obviously, my my tournament team didn't matter at all, but I actually did. Like Blender was in my head as I was building it because I normally would never play a Mike Evans like in a spot like this, I would never play a Mike Evans and a uh, Damian Harris on a team like this because their ownership, but I knew having the Bridgewater Tyreek and Waddle stack that I was going to like, I'm not playing against the whole field if that stack goes off. And so a 20% own Mike Evans doesn't um, didn't scare me as much as it did, but the team sucked anyway. It didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, you know, Sammy's team. Oh yeah. yeah, Sammy, let's go. Oh yeah, Sammy. Uh, so this was in the hundred dollar spy, the five hundred k one. Uh, I did play Hertz. I played Hertz and I single stacked him with Goddard. This is like this is like a pretty chalky team. I brought it back with Marquise Brown. I played Kamara and Brees Hall at running back. I got a little mini correlation with Godwin and Drake London. I did play oh, the yeah. Atlanta Falcons, dude. What they, a fucking mess. Yeah, it's yeah. so bad. Cuck balls. Uh, and I played Shakir as my last run, uh, receiver and the Tennessee Titans defense. This team only had three players under 10%. Drake London uh, was 8%. Marcus I mean, Brown, 9.2. To Titans, be honest, 4.5. You know, I've been, I don't know if that's good. Obviously, I, I don't agree with everything that Blunder says because who can imagine agreeing with everything that he said? But I mean, I thought a couple of the points he said made sense. Like you got to, if you're going to play chalk, like, and obviously this is not no, nothing new under the sun. Like if you're going to play chalk, you need to be doing it in thoughtful ways. Like you need to play a couple 5% guys if you're going to play. And, and the other thing is like to be getting, if you're going to play the chalk, do it in a way that's creating leverage against other chalks. So like, uh, you know, Evans was actually leveraged on Leonard Fournette because there are only so many touchdowns available, yada, yada. Or like, if you're going to play, uh, you know, if you're going to play Josh Allen, like, you know, play, play one of his guys who is, is, you know, don't play Diggs, right. Play someone, play Quentin Morris, play, play Shakir. Play Gabe Gabe Davis, Davis, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, I, it's, it's like, obviously, uh, you know, all of us are still learning and, and figuring stuff out as, as all of this goes along. Uh, I mean, it, it stinks. I had, I, I, by this time last year, I'd already had a top 10 sweat in the red zone and I'd already taken second in it by this time, two years ago. So we're, we're still fighting to have a profitable season. We would like, you should have just played the cash team, right? Should have just yeah, played I, the cash uh, team. I, I, after, I was shocked. After, after, after this week, I pulled up my, like, you know, I do a bankroll tracker just to make sure I'm playing in the right contests and, and, you know, uh, exploiting my edge. Well, and, uh, my tournament, uh, not not a great spot for me and then to have my cash team hit this way and to see like a zero in tournaments everywhere was like super tilting super yeah. tilting because i mean that cash run out was like as good as you're gonna get like that's what you're hoping for. it's gotta be it's gotta be the most points any of us has ever scored in cash right 221 
got it's got to be, be got to be the most right i there's gotta been be. 200 weeks before but 221 is uh even if it's not the most overall points, it was just how high it was in the field. Like it wasn't just that it was the chalk team. It was also the best of the chalk teams where it wasn't just, that's the bummer. I mean, and in tournaments, I mean, I've, I've, I've lit money on fire every week through five weeks. So. Well, I mean, you got to light money on fire until you get first place, right? That's the whole thesis. That's right. You gotta, you gotta light fire on money to make money as the old saying goes. Yeah. That's uh that is what they say. All right, guys, I gotta get out of here. Everyone, thank you very much for listening. Uh, we will uh we'll be back next week.